All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast. I'm joined by Mr. George Hincapi over there checking on his wine downstairs at his in his uh, his mansion on the hill in Greenville. I'll get I'll, I'll get to you in a second, George. I got I got something for you. Oh Yo- no, Johan Brunil tightening up the wardrobe. Love it. Look look at him just weeded out today, huh? And as ever, looking very, very American today. You know, he's got the hat on, the t shirt. No, he looks like straight out of like skate skate park. Yeah. 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 You're only, you're our only Euro guest. You know how to keep it Euro for us, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not, this is the first time (laughs) I'm wearing a hat like this, like a (laughs) flat. Normally I have, I have this kind of hat, right? A dad, we call that a dad hat. A dad dad hat. hat, But, you know, it looks good. Lars sent me some and they're all like this. So, you know, I just, I just, I I said, I said, oh, I'll become modern, you know, I'll modern up. Yeah. Get around those obstacles. You'll, you'll, you'll modernize. <laughs> <laughs> and JB Hager down there in Austin, Texas, the ATX. How y'all doing? <clears throat> doing good. Doing good. By the way, I should have said, we're talking about uh, this morning's uh, flesh will own a race that uh, yours truly, uh, believe it or not, God, you got to go back many, many moons. What's it been now? You on 26 years ago i yeah. won that race i won that race in 1996 mm-hmm. uh a race that I, I actually i'm super psyched for doing a show on it i love love this race and i'll and i'll get into more of that later um but for now today's show brought to you by george's favorite i know and i just want to have uh, an update george on how you know because you and bobby again just spend a lot of time together on the bike off the bike is he uh is he uh, is he manscaped up <laughs> Oh man, he did find it quite funny that you were talking about uh, us dual manscaping the other day. Um, just... So he appreciated he appreciated the laugh, but I'm not sure. I didn't ask him. I didn't you can get up. Christian, just... get Christian in there too, man. Do a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'm visualizing this. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness they are the global leaders in men's blood <laughs> <laughs> oh shit god y'all are good sports for hanging in there on this with us this is this is too good <laughs> global leaders in men's below the waist grooming they offer precision engineered tools for your family jewels and is now offering products for your not so private parts like your nose and your ears don't forget that shit dudes uh, we have an exclusive offer for our audience. Use the code the move to get 20% off plus plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Uh, oh shit. I can't even <laughs> dude, George, you know, you love that, man. You love the, attention. That, that was actually kind of good. You did the double hand thing. That was, that was good. I'll give you that one. That one you can have. And, look, when Enzo, on and, and when Enzo gets older, I mean, they probably <laughs> sent you enough. You can just like leave him aside. Be like, bro, in a couple of years, this you'll need this. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> uh, today's show also brought to you by Dry Farm Wines. Now, this is this is cool. Uh, as you all know, who listen to the show regularly. Hey, uh, we love our wine. And uh, oftentimes up till this relationship with Dry Farm, we were just drinking stuff. And, you know, you bought at the store, you, are you collected? Look at, look at behind George, look at all that stuff. Um, crazy stat when it comes to, uh, to wine making, uh, the FDA actually approves 76 additives that are approved to put into the process of making wine. Well, not with dry farm wines, they are organically and biodynamically grown, right? So that means a whole lot of things, sugar-free, lower alcohol, uh, a, a really unique way of irrigation. And so we're going to do a special package for our listeners. We're doing a curated box for the tour of Italy, the tour of France and the tour of Spain. We made a slight uh, slip up. Uh, didn't want people to think they had to wait till those tours uh, to get those. Those wines are actually available today. So just go to dryfarmwines.com slash we do. And uh the first 50 orders will receive a complimentary we do notebook. These are super cool. Leather bound, you know, like one of those fancy things that smart people use to take notes. Um, so that's dryfarmwines.com slash we do. All right, man. You know, let's, I have a question before we talk about the breakdown of the ratio on. Are we done 
having classics in like rain. I mean, God forbid it rains. God for, I mean, I remember going, George, chime in too. Like you would get ready for the classics. You'd get excited for them, but you'd be like, oh shit, it, the weather it is going, mm -hmm. you just dreaded the weather. I mean, I, and, you know, we could all sit here. Oh, it's global warming. They're going to, it's going to be 90 in the future, but it's, it's just never, are we done? Like what's going on? Yeah. I mean, and especially, you know, those, those classics in the, in the Ardennes, you know, that's still a yeah. little bit colder than in Flanders. Exactly. Um, and I remember sometimes, you know, like really at the start, it was super cold, even, even when it was not raining, it was always cold. And now, yeah, I mean, it's obviously a trend, you know, they're racing in short sleeves. And uh, I mean, the only guy that I saw today racing in, in long sleeves was Thomas Pitcock, but he was obviously not feeling well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's been a while since we've been we've seen some uh, some classics in, in really bad and cold weather. Yeah, and, and I, I mean I wouldn't say that's a we're certainly not weather experts here on the Move Show, but um I think they just gotten lucky with the weather. When I was at Flanders a couple of weeks ago, it was freezing cold. It was snowing the days leading up to the race, and it looked like it was going to be a very epic cold gnarly race, but it ended up being nice. So I think it's just they got lucky this year, but by no means does it make the racing any easier. And this reminds me of a funny story. You know, you, we all worked with this guy. We had this one, your Freddie Viana. Uh -huh. And he was just your, I mean, he was like your stereotypical Belgian poster child. It was like, he, he actually, he says, hi, by the way, I, I met him. I met him by coincidence two weeks ago. Uh, wow. It says hi. Yeah. <laughs> Great. But he would always, you know, the weather was, if, if by chance we did have good weather for the spring classics, he would be in the, in the bus at the team. Probably like, oh, hey. <laughs> we were a, a, uh, really lucky with the weather. I, I know. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm like, what kind of, what the fuck kind of logic is that? How about when it rains, then we're unlucky. Like that's what the way my brain worked. I'm like, wait, it's sunny out. And now we're lucky. No, when it pisses rain or snows, then that's bad luck. <laughs> Y'all follow me. Hey, you got it. Uh, you, you ever guys got, got super. It? That super hot sauce on your legs before some of those cold rainy days from Freddie. That you put it on your legs and your legs are like on fire. That so much that when you took a shower after the race, like you could barely have the water touch it because it, it felt like your skin was burning off. It's like, it get was, this it off was, of me. It was, uh, I, I remember it was red hot Kramer. Yeah. Oh. You remember that? Yeah, that was not good. Yeah. Yeah, well, he had, a, he had a, whole, a whole special formula. Then he would put a layer on like a baby oil or some shit on top of that. And you're well, like, oh, no, then the other riders would, would request the, uh, the carotene so their legs would look tan. They'd yeah. have the carotene on mixed in with the oil so they'd have like really dark legs. <laughs> See, th this is why we were a lot slower back in the day. These guys were, they really, they were, they cared about the important shit. <laughs> Not watts per kilo and ketones and, 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 you know, what's this other thing they say all the time that, that the other three initials, like, that, that, that i don't even know what it is ftp people ask me all the time hey what's your ftp i'm like what kind of fucking question what, what do you mean what is my ftp i'm a fat old man i got five kids i i, I work i'm like george and like my ftp stop with this by the way we are going to talk about the bike race we all watch today hopefully soon um why not now Dylan well, you, I, I, yeah, I was just going to throw in you since you mentioned the weather. You've you've said I know you've said it, Lance. When when you line up and it's cold and wet, and it, half the guys have quit already. So yeah. we get all these dry races. Is that what you know? That might be part of the reason we're seeing a lot more riders in contention at the end. Well, that just, well, you have a lot. I think, I, my view, you have a lot more in contention because this, as we've talked about many times in the past, this in this peloton as a body. All right, so the, the whatever race it is, the 200 guys going down the road are just, they're way more serious. They're way more incentivized. They train much harder. They follow every, you know, all the things that in the, in the day, the tip of the spear had to focus on that has trickled down to, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. if there's nine riders, it's gone from rider one all the way to rider. They all care. And so that's, and then, yeah, of course, then you layer in sunny days and, and, and dry roads. I mean, yeah, big difference. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, what the, today, today again, you know, you it's it's so hard to make a separation in the in the group if you if you see, you know, it's been it's been a, a fast race again, and uh, you know they come to the bottom of the last climb, 
uh, and there's still 70, 80 guys there. You know, and mm-hmm. you can, uh, Flesh Wallon is a hard race. There's there's lots of climbs, and um, it's only on the on the very very last, even on the Muir of Hue, it's it's only on the, in the last 100 meters. I remember. Before it was like okay, you got to the Muir of Hue, and and it was like ten or twenty guys, and and everybody else set up. Now everybody just keeps going. But they didn't. I was disappointed. I mean, this is a very different race than than you know they like a lot of these races. They've changed the circuit. They've changed the dynamic. Um, but I thought the second time up was pretty controlled, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 maybe that's just. A, a byproduct of the sport now and, and guys you know it's still not close to the finish so you had to be somewhat calculated but that could have been way more aggressive well, i think yeah, I, I think that had something to do with their they added a new climb right johan right before the muir the hoy about 10k before that um the race had been super aggressive i always think i've actually never done uh flesh alone one of the few races in the in the calendar that i haven't done but for me even though it's a very difficult race, I feel like it's the most predictable race there. Right? There's probably five percent of guys that feel like they have a chance in the final climb, and then the rest, their sole purpose is to either help those their teammates that might have the chance at the end, or to try to get away before that final climb up to near the way, which makes the race very hard, very aggressive, um, but very predictable as well. I, I think it's safe to say, and this is the reason I not that I was. Uh, <clears throat> when I won in 96, I was in a group with, and we were talking about in the pre-show with the French guy and I were, these guys were busting me because I couldn't remember the guy's name. I was like, I know it's a Rue something. And the first name, what the fuck does it matter? You know, <clears throat> I guess Laurent Rue and they were like, all laugh. Anyways, it wasn't Laurent Rue. Turns out Laurent Rue is Johan tells us. It's like drives hay bales around literally, which I don't know how you know that anyways. Uh, but I was in, a, it, it, he and I, Roos and I, Rue or Roos, whatever, were away beforehand. So I don't think in 96 uh, that I was, a, quote unquote, the strongest guy in the race. I think a day like today, I mean, we have to all agree that Dylan Toons was by far yeah. the strongest rider in the race. I mean, if you start, mm-hmm. if, if there's no, you know, no big explosions in the race, no big, you know, everybody kind of starts, I mean, I think it's fair to say that Valverde and Pogachar and and Ala Philippe, Philippe and yeah. all of these guys, you know, they got there with the best chances that they could have hoped for. And of course, I mean, Dylan Toons was, was exceptional. And I think that the thing that stands out for me is they knew it, right? His yeah. team went to the front with maybe 50, 60 K to go. There was a slight, it caught some guys in the back. They lined it up on the front. I was, I thought, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. They clearly knew what they were doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think they've been one of the teams, one of the three teams that took control of the race, but especially, you know, they were all around one guy and, and that guy was clearly uh, Dylan Tunes. I mean, they had, a, they had a team, they had Damiano Caruso, second in the Giro. They had Walt Pulse, ex-winner of Les Baston Liege uh, and Dylan Tunes. And they were really riding for Dylan Tunes. Um, this is a guy like, you know, he's been a little bit under the radar, but let's not forget, you know, he was, he was sixth in the tour of Flanders, you know, what a contrast, which I, I think is an amazing stat. Yeah. You know, I mean, and you could say, okay, Pogacar was also, you know, Pogacar's focus is on Liege, Baston Liege and, and Flesh, but he was the best rider in, 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 Paris, in uh, tour of Flanders. So uh, I think we're going back a little bit, as, like I said, in, 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 in the Flanders show, you know, there's guys who, who do it all, uh, you know, We'll see, for, for example, we'll see Wald van Aert at the start in, uh, in Liège-Baston-Liège. He missed out on Flanders, but he was super, super good in, in Roubaix. And he's going to be, in my opinion, one of the candidates for Liège-Baston-Liège. So, so Tunes, um, you know, he was sixth in Flanders. He was, I think, eighth or ninth in Amstel Gold Race. He was also top 10 in Flesh Brabanson. So he's obviously, and he said in his post-race interview that this is the best form of his life that he's mm. been in and, you know not really translated before this race in results but obviously he feels that he's, he's good and and that's that's obviously something also that they talk about within the team nowadays you know they have such a, a way of measuring the physical fitness of everybody and uh, they had no doubt that this was the leader and they took charge <laughs> of the race whenever they had to well, yeah, like I you think- mentioned Johan in the notes uh, we got sixth place in Flanders what a diverse rider not only that, won a stage at the Tour de France on a mountain stage, a very tough mountain day. Um, I'm just curious, what's your opinion on how long ago do you think that, okay, Dylan got six in the Tour of Flanders, 
But are they making this? Because there are some really good riders on that team, obviously. With Jack, like you mentioned, which, Jack. George, which, which George? Which team is that? We've had some uh, some emails Bahrain, about Bahrain. Bahrain. Wait, tr- tr- try, that, that, try, one, try try one more. T- you with all your Bahrain. fancy friends. I don't even know how to say it. Man, the sheik's gonna come down on your ass. Try one He's more time. Come- Bahrain. <laughs> George, it's Bahrain victorious. No, I think it's Bahrain. No, the victorious part. Yeah, no, you, neither neither of you Bahrain. Bahrain. It's a listen. country. You know, it's a country, right? Bahrain. I, it's Bahrain. I've, there's only one oh, look, person look, on now. Now, now, Lance is chiming. In. Can I down. finish my there's point? A, there's only been one person on the show who's ever been to Bahrain, and it's me. You, you've <laughs> been there. You're wow. right. Yeah, you're not the only one with fancy friends with jizzies and yatskis and all that shit. <laughs> Bahrain, okay. okay. True story. So, you say, so you're saying it different than Johan, then? Oh, I mean, uh, you know, the European way or the, in it, the English way of saying is Bahrain. Bahrain. Okay. Anyway, going back to my point, I'm just curious. <laughs> so did you think they they of course obviously they all do the recon every team does a recon especially this year with the new client before the the mir de hoy um do you think it's something where he's just like man guys i got no chain i need you to work for me because well, he's got some really good riders on that team guys that have done super well in classics and in grand tours and like you said they put it all on the line for him and mm. with four or five hundred meters to go he's there i'm still not picking him for the win i'm mm. sure probably you guys weren't either so I think clearly they had some information before the, today's race that they just uh, were very confident in him. How yeah, often? I mean, how often do the, they know that uh, a rider's on peak like that day? It's on. It's happening. Is it at the? How often is it at the start? Like when they line up, uh, or is it mid? How often is it mid race where you go? I think, yeah, I'm, I've got I, it today. I, I think it's both. I mean, I think we could always see guys in, within our team that were like, "Wow, this okay." Uh, I think so. Yeah, you can see the way. I mean, first of all, within the teams nowadays, they have the stats, right? So they have the data. Uh, they know who's good. But then, of course, on the day, uh, you know, it's still, you still have to deliver. So for sure, Dylan Turns has said in the first part of the race to his teammates, hey, I'm feeling great. You know, whatever numbers I have produced during the week, I can confirm that I'm feeling great. So I think I have a chance. You, you feel that as a rider in the race and and so yeah i agree it's a combination of both um and um and probably caruso you know he comes back from sicily so he, he was probably a bit tired they both caruso and Wout pools they're probably focusing more on liege baston liege which is a different race it's longer it's not so steep at the end um and so yeah turns saw his opportunity today and, and and you know i mean he confirms i mean he's he's won already two stages in the tour you know he won the stage Last year, the first mountain stage uh, in the Alps where Pogacar did his big attack. Uh, you know, he was ahead and he stayed ahead. And I think the year before or two years before, he won on La Planche de Belfi. Um, another really, really hard, uh, hard mountain stage in, um, in, in the Tour de France. And then, uh, you know, he said today, he said he was already on the podium in Flesh Wallon five years ago. He was second or third. So... Obviously, you know, it's, he's, he doesn't come out of nowhere. You know, I remember as a, as a really young rider on, on BMC, uh, he, once he won eight races in a row. He won, he won the Tour of Poland, he won the Tour of Wallonia, and he won another race. So, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's been a bit inconsistent, but, you know, he's a, he's a, great, a great racer and a guy who knows how to win. By the, and also, when he got third in Fletch Malone, he was going head to head with Valverde, and he said Valverde went right when he went this year. Yeah, um, yeah. And and Valverde was coming. I mean, mm-hmm. even with 100 meters to go, it looked like he was going to go around him and win the race. And all of a sudden, well, his then he, came he, out. Set, he set up. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I hope I, mean, I hope we're able to show the the clip after the show sometime, or somehow put it back in. But you saw, if I can say, there was maybe perhaps one lack of, of focus or, or just one one mistake from Valverde was he had the perfect setup from his team at the bottom of Mio de Hoy. Perfect. And he got there and for a minute he lost the wheel of his, his two guys and when Enric Moss started chasing, Valverde had to come from about 10 back on the climb with about eight, 900, 900 to 700 meters to go. You know what? That could have been what cost him the victory because he lost the wheel there, had to get back up to Enric Moss's wheel. Uh, which which is a bit of a match there that he had to burn to get back to his teammate's wheel because his teammate was there pulling for him, obviously. And just at the end, the last 75, 75, 75 meters, he ran out of gas. 
Yeah. So I, there, there, I do want to talk about the podium and I want to talk about the notables that were not on the podium. Cause if I think for all of us, if we would have stood at the bottom of the climb and saw Alaphilippe there, Pogachar, all the, all the cast of characters, I think we would not have predicted this and had a, a, a totally different read on the race. Um, but I want to break that down before we do. Uh, today's show also brought to you by HVMN. They are the exclusive ketone sponsor and partner of the move. I know we've been starting to play around with this, George. Uh, you got a quite a head start on the fitness stuff, so you're you're probably a little lazy on it. I'm I am optimizing everything to to just for the month of July to make sure I don't get completely schooled. Um, the ketone IQ is is we is very prevalent right out there in at, in all high performance sports, but especially the Peloton. Um, you've been living under a rock. If you haven't heard of ketones, this is, um, very, very, uh, very effective. And I think we can speak firsthand. And also the taste has gotten a lot better. The price has come way down when this was first developed, this was developed for the special forces and was cost prohibitive. And the taste, apparently I wasn't in that study was, uh, uh, not great. Uh, but here's the stats. Let me just give this to you. 2% increase in athletes endurance, 15% increase in mean power output after recovery. I have a feeling that has something to do with FTP, which if, for anybody who knows what that means, just email it to me, FTP, whatever. Uh, but we've been playing around and thanks to you all. Apparently they can't keep this stuff on the shelves. Super cool. Head on over to hvmn.com slash ketone. Use the promo code, the move for 10% off hvmn.com slash ketone last one of the day oh my god did i have a good night's sleep last night probably didn't hurt that i'm off the booze you heard that right george you heard that right all right for how long as long as it takes as long as it takes I, i'm 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 sick now of this how shit. it all uh, makes sense this is when you're whenever you're off the booze is when <laughs> g's in trouble so if it's like a month long lance off the booze, i get yelled at about every couple uh, days <laughs> So, but I, let me tell you I, hope the, I hope the period's a little bit shorter, but okay, I'm proud of you. Keep no, going. but I slept like a baby, and and all the data that I that, that I wake up and see in the morning proved it. Uh, but I, I really credit my Helix sleep mattress. Uh, super simple. So I what I did, and George uh, as well. You go on their site. You take a two minute sleep quiz. You talk about uh, what's special about your sleep, the special characteristics. They completely customize the mattress for you and drop ship it right to your front doorstep. And for our listeners right now, check this out. $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows, right? So that's helixsleep.com slash move slash, sorry, slash the move. That's $200 off all mattress uh, orders and two free pillows, helixsleep.com slash the move. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm fed up. I'm really, uh, and you know what else I started doing? And this shit was like. I needed therapy after this. I got on a scale. This <laughs> shit fucked me up. I was, man. God. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it said. If, if you sent us a video of you men's game and Bobby and Christian. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's not go down this again. But no, so in all seriousness, um, Pogachar, Alaphilippe, Alaphilippe, this just continues the story of, and I know, Johan, you, you don't think Lefebvre's freaking out. Um, time's running out. This has not been a good spring campaign for them. I, no, I mean, even even if they win Liège, Baston Liège, it's not been yeah. a good spring campaign. No, and you know? here's I have a question for you. Okay, and I thought about this during the race today, or maybe after the race when Alaphilippe didn't win. Does Patrick Lefebvre, if he had to, obviously, if he had to choose, he would choose Flanders, but is, is Liège different? You know, obviously, they are from Flanders. Their sponsors are from Flanders. That is different as for those listening. So Belgium is really, and Johan, you should talk about this more than me, but split into two parts, right? You have the French part and the Flemish <clears> part. <throat> mm -hmm. Does, uh, I mean, what percentage of Flanders is Liège in terms of significance for a, a, a Flemish team? I mean, if they win Liège, Baston Liège, it's going to be great. Uh, you know, cycling in Belgium but, is But not Flanders just, is five or 10 times but, bigger. Flanders is no, not five or 10 times. No, I mean, uh, as I would say one and a half time bigger, not, not, mm, so you know, much. so because, you know, every Belgian follows Liège Baston Liège. It's not because it's in Wallonia and, um, you know, so they, they, they still have a chance. I mean, I, I don't think we should focus 
uh, Liege Bastogne Liege is a different place than Flash Wallon, you know. So we're, we're going to see the same guys, but also, you know, I, I count uh, definitely Ala Philippe and uh, Pogacar as two of the big favorites for for Liege, maybe more so than than Flash Wallon uh, because it's longer and it's different. Um, but of course, you know, I mean, they didn't have a they didn't have a good uh, a good season, and um, and you know, win they actually need to win Liege Bastogne Liege, right? You know, they, in, in order to save their spring. Going back to uh, Lance, a differentiator between Liège and Flanders. I mean, the Belgians, they look at Flanders as like the tough man, the hard man's race. And it's like the pinnacle of cycling, of international sport, whoever can win Flanders. And if you're a Belgian, you're a hero for the rest of your life. Of course, Liège, the best on Liège is super important, but they think of it more as a climbers, a GC sort of style race. And yeah. even though it's very hard, I've done it a couple of times, they don't look at it the same as they do as Flanders. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh Okay, let's talk about Pogachar then, because he was right there, and you you know from the helicopter angle, when the race went away, he he just sat down. He just didn't yeah. have it. I, I I couldn't believe that. I don't. Maybe I, I think look, even I the think, best of the best, and he clearly is the best of the best. I think also have bad days, and maybe this yeah. style that you know the, the Muir de Wee is very steep. Yeah, but I also think I also think that probably during the race, Pogachar must have indicated to his team that he was okay but not great because UAE have not take, taken control of the race at any point they've just been around Pogacar but you know it was always Ineos Ineos was ri ri riding an amazing race again they couldn't finish the job but they they were really strong as a team and and uh, quick step a little bit and uh, and Bahrain those were the teams basically that took you know UAE we haven't seen them really chase uh, so maybe during uh, during the race, uh, Pogacar has uh, has indicated that he wasn't feeling top. You know, I mean, uh, he he did uh, he did Flanders, but he didn't race that much before. And um, and you know, I think I think Liège is obviously a, a goal for him. He won it already. He was second already or third, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was I was also uh, I was also surprised because you know, based on what we have seen this year of basically every single time there was an uphill finish in any stage race, he was way ahead of everybody else. There was nobody who could match his acceleration. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, he's not, a, he's not on top form. And you know what? At the end of the day, I think it's kind of logical also. I mean, I'm kind of, uh, I wouldn't say worried, but concerned when I see uh, a guy like Pogaccia, when a guy like Roglic, you know, they go every single race for the win. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, they are focusing on the Tour de France. So how long can they keep this form or how, how good can they manage to go up and down with their peaks in their form, you know? Um, so, but, Johan, one thing, one thing I'd like to point out, too, is, I mean, Pogacar, he had a mechanical with 40K to go. That's no mm -hmm. easy task to get back to the front of the race in uh, this semi-classic. It's a very difficult thing. So perhaps that took a little bit out of him. But if you remember last year, in the, the Italian, the pre Lombardia races where Pogacar was good, wasn't great, but then yeah. he destroyed everybody in Lombardia. That's what I'm Correct. feeling like today. Perhaps yeah. he was a little bit off and said, you know what? I got Sunday. Not only that, but Sunday is another 60 kilometers. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound like much, but once you get to pass that 220 kilometer oh, mark, it makes, there's it makes a whole a different racing thing going on. There's a whole different oh, set no, of endurance that's needed. Totally. And, yeah, and, so and I, the, I can't, we can't and, count them out for Sunday. And Liège, are, they're, they're different climbs. I mean, outside of Labrador, the only thing close to this is Labrador. Th these are much, you know, they are longer, they're more gradual, they're not easy, but it, it, mm. they, they just wear you down over 260 plus kilometers. Um, to, it's a, to, yeah, yeah, totally different race. Yeah, it is. It is, but you know, I mean, Pogacar, I mean, he was, he was there in third, fourth position until he saw that, you know, he could, he didn't have it. And this, you know, you you basically can only judge the last 150 200 meters you know because until then he was up there with everybody else but i think you know who we who we reached really talk about uh, a part of the, the the winner who was for sure the strongest guy is you know alejandro valverde i mean uh, it's unbelievable unbelievable i mean 41 years old his last season apparently his last season he now he swears it's his last season you know, I, if I would be movie star, I would try to convince him because, you know, take Valverde away and there's nothing, you know, movie star won three races this year, all three by Alejandro Valverde. 
So at 41 years old, he's there. You know, he rides away from Pogacar, rides away from Alaphilippe, tried to match um, Dylan Tuns, couldn't do it, but, you know, finishes second. Uh, and thinking that, you know, 2022, 41 years old, and this guy won five times, five times the, the Flesh Wallon, five times. Uh, and his first win was in 2006, 16 years ago. <laughs> 16 wow. years ago and i have a little a little stat here a little list uh, uh you know, of, course, of course you do <laughs> yeah so the, i have the times of alejandro valverde every single flesh wallon he did or every single time he went up the mur of the mur de Huy. okay this, the, this is going to be good the last kilometer so uh in 2006 he won the the flesh wallon and his last kilometer was two minutes 51 seconds in 2022, 16 years later, he's second in Flesh Wallon in two minutes 48. Wow. Three seconds faster than wow. when he was 16 years younger, which is incredible. <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and, and thinking that, uh, so his fastest time ever was 2, 241. The record is 240, which is Alaphilippe last year. 40, 40, 41 year old does it in 248. <clears throat> After 200 kilometers of racing uh, against the best in the world, I mean, I mean, I would really, I mean, okay, I love obviously that Dylan Tuns has won. You know, he's a Belgian rider, great talent, but you know, I would really, really have liked Valverde to win this race. Uh, I mean, what an example of, you know, resilience also because the guy oh, yeah. has gone through a lot. You know, both personally, then he had injuries, uh, so, three, four, very serious injuries. Three, three, four years ago, his career was over, basically. Uh, yep. And then he comes back and, and you know, in his last season, you know, he could, he could basically go to every race and just enjoy and say, okay, you know what, I'm going to just enjoy the race. But he, the guy's up there, you know, and that's, well, that's, that's and But, but yeah. we, raced, we raced with the guy, too. The guys, he's, we talked about, you know, some of these young kids now, you put a number on their back, they're like, all right, where's the start line? Let's go. He's always been that way. Now, that over time, as you get older, yeah, you, you, yeah, I'm going to take a chill day. He is still, you put the numbers on his back. Yeah. Fucking guy just wants to get to the finish line before anybody else. Like that, he's a Hall of Famer, straight yeah. up. But especially. What's funny in his, in his post-race interview, he's he, even he, even at this stage in his career, where, he, like you said, he's won five times. He said, man, I felt really good at home, but you still don't know what that's going to translate to in the race. So even yeah. at this stage in his career, he still needed a you know that bout of confidence that he got today which I think he'll even, he might even be better on Sunday because now he knows that what his feeling was at home is translating to the competition as well. Yeah, George, are, he, you, are, you, are you intentionally trying to blind us with that bling, with the lights overhead, and you keep I'm not. Like, <laughs> pulling it up, and it's just sort of like, I, if you're yeah, going to keep I, doing I, it, just that's fine. I just, I'm going to go get my shades. You see? You back. see what I mean? I get, I'm get, this is like, I just can't wait to start <laughs> drinking some dry farm, farm wine again. <laughs> Send him the box. Send him the uh, Grand Tour box. But, you know, I mean, to... to to finish, finish talking about uh, about Valverde, you know, um, this is this is the, the the example of the contrary of what modern cycling is because we all know, you know, he's not into data, he's not into numbers for his training. His level of comparison is his group of friends, and apparently there's, you know, he li he just rides in big groups uh, at his home in his hometown around Murcia, and that's where he feels how good he is, and uh, so you know, obviously. For him, that's still the best, the best way of preparing. And, you know, thinking that he, so, uh, he retired from the Tour of Catalonia being sick and then, you know, showing up again at the, at the first race and being at that level, it's, it's incredible. So maybe that's what FTP is. I just actually, I just figured it out. It's the friend's training plan. <laughs> that's, are the, that's are the friend's training program. Is that, I have been, definite. people ask me, oh, yeah. Because I ride with friends a lot, so that I can That's, I can answer. It. Maybe it's just a question of like, do you usually ride with two people or twelve people? Yeah, okay, now it's I definitely, know. That's, good, that's good definitely good Valverde, Valverde's FTP is definitely the friends training plan for sure. <laughs> uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you guys about, is, is if you noticed, uh, Alaphilippe was on Pogachar's wheel, and then Pogachar popped like he was done, and then there's that it it brought uh, Alaphilippe. I mean that slows you down, and then there's yeah, that gap but, you have to close. If is that, that if, enough? If, would if he? You're good, no, if you're good enough, I think you go around. 
Yeah. yeah. You always say, if you're, you're good, good, if you're good, you're anticipating that gap. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. you're seeing the rider in front of you go, this guy is going to lose the wheel. I got to go around. If yeah. you're good, you do it. Mm. Ala Philippe was very honest in his post race interview. He said, uh, you know, he said, okay, maybe something that I could have done better was the position. You know, he came from eighth or 10th position. And then, but he said, you know, at the end, the result would have been the same. I right. didn't have the legs to go with Valverde and, and Dylan Turns. Okay. Class answer. All right, before Which we for him, that's here. a big difference. No. I mean, 10 second, 10 second difference, uh, mas or menos from his time last year. I mean, that's a huge uh, finishing, oh. you know, kilometer difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, before we cut out, let's make some predictions. I want to get back to this prediction game for uh, Liege, mm -hmm. Besson, Liege. <laughs> 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 let's all try go, to can let's I go all, first? Can I let's go all first? try to pick people uh who are actually gonna do the race. I know that's times. the hard part. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh Pogachar. Oh come on, oh, that's a real what a oh, oh wow. That was my pick. Chicken <laughs> shit wanted to go first. <laughs> that's why I went first. Best rider in the world. Good job. <clears throat> okay, Lance, I'll I'll let you go. I'll go last. I I, I uh, no, I want JB to go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I'll go. I, I'm going to pick wild van art because Johan, you, you, you talked about him and I, I, I think, I, I think he has the legs to climb with those guys. Um, yeah, I'm going wild van art. Uh, I think it, Pitcock's going to have a good day. Oh, you no. <laughs> it's difficult. You know, if you're, if you're sick, if you're sick today, yeah, it's, it's difficult to recover. It's only four yeah. days from now. It's hard yeah. to, <laughs> okay, well, so well no, to... that's JB. No, no. Enios is Enios is riding well. Good, yeah, good pick. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take a very uh, you know not a favorite, not a um, not somebody. I mean, it's it's a big gamble, but I'm gonna go for Søren Krach Andersson. Mm. Ooh, we, we saw the Scar Rock. We saw the Scar Rocker show himself today. Yeah. I love, I love. Yeah. I was doing a little no doubt. Like when he yeah. went, I was like, whatever the he, fuck they sing. I was like, I just know it's no doubt. Scott that was Rock, a, that yeah. was some big power, you know, and you know he did he didn't do Flanders on purpose to prepare for these classics. I, I don't think this this uh, race today was was uh, you know ideal for him, but you know if it's a tactical game at the end and he's there, he's I think got the he nose. has the power to to go. Why did, to go with. JB you JB, why, JB did, why don't you why don't you revise yours JB and pick Valverde? Somebody here needs to pick Valverde. Mm. Yeah, that's right. your pick. That, I'll go that with that. That would be incredible. Yeah, yeah, he's he's. I mean, that's a great story for the whole season. Yeah, JB, uh, four four time winner of Liege Baston Liege, so you know he could make it five. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, if I can switch, would, I'll take it. Well, he, <laughs> he, he would equal. Uh, he would equal Eddie Merckx, uh, who won it five times Liege Baston Liege. So hey, uh, I, have I, don't, I don't. I don't hate that pick. I I, I have a question before we wrap too. Uh, I think I was thinking about it when you, we were saying you won this in '96, right? Well, we all know what happened to you in October of 96. Yep. Do you think you were sick when you won Flesh Wallone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah right? For sure. Yeah. You had to have been riddled with cancer at that time and didn't know it. Yeah, but even worse was the Olympic Games, you know, six weeks before diagnosis, the Games in Atlanta. Mm. So, you know, you go from, went from Liège to uh, Tour du Pont uh, to the Tour, Tour de, which I didn't stay Tour de France. Long. Tour de yeah. France, was, I wasn't there the whole time. And then the Olympics. But yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. I know. You won sick. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> you know, for all those people, you know, God, JB, you, you are in charge of this comeback campaign. You know, the guy was actually had riddled cancer. You should feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, man. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And uh, it, it, we, we got we to gotta sign off now. George has got some stuff to go take care of. <laughs> do a little twist uh, with it george uh, <laughs> we'll see y'all sunday right <laughs> thanks y'all <laughs> okay <stop. laughs>